This is a 25 marker on income and wealth inequalities. Uh, it's focused in Brazil, so this is going to be very much about developmental economics. It's from Excel paper 2. My suggestion, as always, pause the video now, try and answer the question to yourself, at least pause the video and have a think about what you would write if you're not going to like write out an answer or an outline. Have a think about the arguments you would come up with, and then watch the video and sort of compare what you're doing to what I'm doing. There are no sort of, um, well, there are right and wrong answers, but there's not like one way to answer these questions. Uh, so, like, if you're writing stuff that's different from me, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it's useful to have a point of comparison, I think. And, and there, you know, there's going to be a range of things that are actually correct, and, and some things are just going to be wrong. Um, so the question reads, in terms of income distribution and wealth distribution, Brazil is one of the most unequal countries in the world. Its income Gini coefficient is 0 0.449, and is ranked number two in the world for its wealth inequality. Evaluate possible economic causes of income and wealth inequality within a country such as Brazil. And I think you should read a country such as Brazil as meaning a developing country. Um, maybe, yeah, like I, I think provided you're sort of staying within developing countries, that's fine. Um, if you know stuff about Brazil, great. If you can think of examples from other countries, that might also be super helpful um, in terms of application points. I'm gonna try and stay focused on Brazil. Um, it's one of the examples I always suggest students try and learn a bit about because it has application to so many different like developing economics points. In terms of possible economic causes of income and wealth inequalities, I am probably going to do um, two main topics as always. One of them is probably going to be on, um, let's say, uh, geographic inequalities. Um, and then I might also talk about um, uh, access to institutions. So here I mean things like healthcare, education, etc. And this is going to be my geographic inequalities point. You could also frame it as like a growth versus equality macro trade-off. Like the trade-off between you know, economic growth and that making inequality worse because wealth is kind of accruing to the top X percentage of the population. Um, so for definitions for this point, I'm going to probably look at things like geographic labor mobility. Um, I might look at um, things like, um, definitely we're going to talk about the Gini coefficient, stuff like that for definitions. The diagram I'm going to show the Lorenz curve. It's going to look like this. Um, the Lorenz curve can be for this is for um, sort of this can be for both income and wealth. But the Lorenz curve is going to look like this, and the more extreme the curve, the more unequal the society is. Um, and so Brazil is probably going to be this like red line. I wanted one with three, so I wanted to show. Very rarely do you get an actually equal economy, but you might want to say divide in, in between sort of developed economies and developing economies because there tends to be more inequality in developing economies. That would be certainly something I would think about. Um, in terms of application, well, let's do what the analysis is first. So I sort of explain the argument that I'm trying to make here. Um, my point is going to be growth tends to increase the um, wealth and incomes of a small share of the population already have, that are already wealthy. And there's a bunch of reasons for this. Um, one, one I'll quickly mention is like already wealthy people are more likely to own shares in companies, which leads to wealth increases as the economy grows. And the second point is going to be the main body, the main thing I want to focus on here, which is like um, increases in incomes with economic growth tends to happen in major cities, while the countryside does not experience similar increases. And I could do sort of like 
one of the diagrams that's kind of interesting for this is like this. So I could, I could do kind of like a um, high school, low school diagram where you've got kind of like, although this it would be like, you know, s supply of labor in major cities and supply of labor in rural areas and demand for labor in major cities and demand for labor in, uh, again, rural areas. So I'd replace sort of the high school ones with major cities and the low school ones with rural areas. And basically the argument is like, if you're a developing economy, you get generally a lot of investment in like a major city. So like, you know, Mexico, you get tons of investment in uh, Mexico City and Brazil, I would say, it's gonna be Sao Paulo and Rio. Get most of the investment. And because that's where the jobs are, and that's a more competitive labor market for businesses, it's going to drive up wages in those areas. Whereas the people who live in more geographically isolated areas aren't going to have access to the same kind of investment, so their incomes and wealth kind of stay the same. Whereas like people who are living in the cities tend to experience a more meaningful increase in your um, level of income and your level of wealth. And then I can also tie that maybe to like because we want that context of developing economies. So I'm going to say developing economies tend to have extremely high growth rates. So, you know, in the sort of 8% range compared to, say, 1% to 2%, 1% to 3% for developed. And tend to have worse transport infrastructure. And so, therefore, they're going to have more problems with geographic labor immobility than a developed economy. So for those reasons, I would expect basically people who are already in cities and who already have access to a certain level of income and wealth are going to get much richer as a consequence of economic development, whereas people in rural areas, maybe in agriculture, are just like not going to experience that increase, and so that's going to make inequality worse. And then um, as an evaluation, I might point out Sticking to this geographic point, I might say the cost of living also rise faster in major cities. So the uh, actual income once adjusted for cost of living may be a less dramatic difference. Than originally appears. So something like that. Um, I might also point out like major cities might get a strain on infrastructure and government resources as they grow rapidly. So I'd be thinking again like favelas outside of Rio, sticking with the Brazil example, where you have a lot of communities that just don't have access to a lot of public infrastructure just because the city has grown so quickly and the government kind of can't keep up with providing those kinds of services. So again, like maybe that's a reason you're creating inequality, but it's not as tied to maybe like the specific city. So access to inst institutions, I might be thinking about looking at things like human development index. So like what are other measures of inequality beyond wealth and sort of incorporating that into my argument. Um, I might be interested in the sort of measures of standard of living. These are factors of production, so that's worth mentioning as well. I think the diagram is a bit less clear with this. You could show sort of like um, shifts in LRAS with increases in investment in education and healthcare, which is related to education and healthcare. I don't know if it's like super related to inequality though. So I've sort of already done. You could move the Lorenz curve down here to topic B. I just think there's way more diagrams to do with the first point than the second. That is okay. I will still have done two diagrams by this point. Um, my application would be like lack of education in the Amazon region of Brazil, for example, or the lack of access to healthcare. Um, basically, the point here is going to be like um, one reason why incomes may not increase for low income uh, families is the lack of government spending on education and healthcare. So there's effectively like no safety net compared to developed economies. Probably not no safety net, but like
like a smaller safety net. So like if you are poor and you don't, then you don't have access to those sorts of things, whereas if you're in a, maybe a developed economy where public education is a norm and there aren't as many access issues in terms of like getting to a school that's near you or like not needing to work on a family farm, um, you know, if you're low income in the UK, you're still going to school, like you're still going to learn to read and write, which is a big difference. Like in Brazil, that is absolutely not the case. Um, um, so you might get lower labor mobility because you can't read and write or literate, um, or you're like certainly not acquiring high level skills. So that kind of specifically would be lower labor occupational mobility. Um, and worse measures in terms of uh, life expectancy, literacy, etc. So those are some of the measurements that are part of that human development index. So a more more broad way of approaching inequality. Part of what we're trying to work in here is maybe a little bit of criticism of this idea that we should be focused on income and wealth inequalities. I still want to connect it to that because I don't want half of my essay to be focused on something else. But one of the criticisms I'm going to be trying to work in a little bit is there's a broader definition of inequality that we can work with here as well. This is still going to be connected to incomes, though. Like that's why I'm including this lower labor, occupational mobility, lower wages, etc. My evaluation might be like there's a trade-off in government spending. Right, governments may not have the resources. in infrastructure or may lack access to investment because they have a more limited tax base. So kind of, I guess, providing a bit of an excuse to the government. Um, in terms of the judgment, I might say, like, uh, one of the major causes for inequalities is that the benefits of development are not evenly distributed. So it's kind of like bringing the two arguments together and saying that like you end up kind of with two different worlds in a lot of developing economies. It's not so much that people have a lower standard of living than they used to, but as you develop, you create sort of a middle class and a certain group of people within the countries like Brazil who have a standard of living very similar to a developed Western country like the United States, the United Kingdom, whereas you still have people who are living in very high levels of absolute poverty.